Josh Green here for Tungsten Tales. Delighted to be joined by Lorraine Wynn Stanley. Lorraine, it's been a couple of months, how are you? I'm good. It's been a busy couple of months, yeah. And uh, everybody's uh, ready for a weekend off, I think, occasionally. Um, I'm lucky enough to have one this weekend, so uh, I'm going to chill this weekend. <laughs> yeah, so, sounds good. It's been a, a very busy couple of months, as we just alluded to. Um, with women's series and obviously WDF World Championships, lots of WDF ranking events as well. So many opportunities at the moment for for women in darts. Oh, the the opportunities have uh, have come along now, and it, it makes the calendar really busy. And I understand people are having to make choices because obviously, like this last weekend, we've got the PDC Ladies Series. There was the Romanian Open, and then the UKDA. Um, so it's hard. People have to go with what they feel um, is their priority. Um, mine was the ladies series. I'd set my stall out to do that this this year, no matter what. So, um, but yeah, people have actually got choices now as opposed to um, just going along with what's on offer. Do you have to prioritise in this sort of situation, whether you want to make sure and sort of make sure in a position for a WDF World Championships or qualifying for... Uh, whether it be the Grand Slam or the match play in, in this instance, because if you don't turn up to a weekend of ladies series, women's series, you may you may be in a position where you're away from those spots. Yeah, absolutely, especially with there being four tournaments over the weekend. Hmm. Um, and it is down to personal choice. Everybody's got different goals that they want to achieve. So um, I suppose, yeah, you have to make choices. Unfortunately, you know, the the ladies series has clashed a couple of times this year and hopefully fingers crossed moving forward um people may not have to make the choices if there are no clashes so um just makes the calendar even busier <laughs> yeah it certainly does and for yourself an excellent weekend um up in barnsley and um, you've you've had some really good results there over the last year or so but um getting that win must have been uh, just a brilliant moment in your career and to secure that that third place on the order of merit it was because obviously I went into the weekend in third place uh, but that in turn still puts pressure on because you never know uh, you know you've still got to try and get those results um, and having been in was it sem seven semi-finals I think and just unable to sort of cross the line uh, and I still thought I'd blown it against Rianne because uh, she was romping ahead and uh, and playing superb and I just managed to dig in and uh, and keep going and Rode my luck in places, you know, and I'm sure every player would agree. It's nice to have a little bit of luck on your side. We're, we're all too used to not having it go our way, you know, so you've got to take those take those chances when they come. At that point in the, the sort of first set of events, were you maybe looking down a bit at the players that were were on their way up? Rianne was obviously one of them that was making strides and she was getting closer and closer to those places. Natalie Gilbert as well. Um, obviously making a final on that on that second day. So um, there were so many players that had come from a long way down that were close to those places. Was there any point you were thinking, I might be in a bit of trouble there? Um, no, because I'd, I'd set my stall out to finish in that top eight and I knew it would sort of take a bit of a disaster for me to for me to not be in the top eight, but then you can't control how other people play. So in mm. turn, I suppose subconsciously, it does put a bit of pressure on. But to be fair, I never really looked at the other people on the list, where they were on the list. But from places sort of three to three to eight, there wasn't a lot in it, you know, so anybody could have gone anywhere. And even below, you know, because um, we've got players come down from sort of 14th, 15th place to end up in that top eight. And they obviously had a superb weekend. So so I think in situations like that, you have to just concentrate on yourself yeah. and and do the best you can um, to ensure you get the results that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And looking ahead to Blackpool, obviously we're about three weeks away from from the start of the world match play probably about four weeks away from the women's world match play have you been there as a, as a fan before or yes I have yes I've been uh, I've been there to watch Dean I've been lucky enough to to experience being in that iconic venue the hottest place on earth I would say and it doesn't seem to matter what the weather's like outside mm. I think because it's such an intimate compact venue 
the heat in there is unbelievable and um that's the one thing i'm not looking forward to because it was hot just watching so i can only imagine uh how hot it's going to be on the stage under the lights in that atmosphere and adrenaline's flowing and whatnot so um but i'm super super excited i can't wait did you ever think you'd have the opportunity to play on the the winter garden stage because it's obviously been a tournament that's been newly introduced and and we never really thought we'd see a women's tournament up there especially on tv as well no from being sitting in the crowd watching dean play at no point did i ever think one day i'll be able to play on that stage because the opportunities just weren't there so that shows how much the ladies game has progressed and the opportunities have come along for us and uh, we can only be grateful for that obviously hmm. Yeah, we're saying we're saying off camera just before we started that you look down the list of averages and there's players averaging in the 80s and in in some cases even in the 90s that maybe a year ago you really wouldn't have expected them to be to be hitting those numbers. But the fact that there's so many players now, some you don't expect that are hitting the big averages, so it shows the the progression of the women's game. Absolutely, and because the opportunities are there. Um, it's it's sort of been that light at the end of the tunnel that we've been waiting for that you know to to have those chances to be on the big stages and be able to showcase what the ladies can do they've always been able to play um but everybody and and i mean everybody especially there at the weekend <clears throat> excuse me everybody's had to raise the game because the standard is getting better and better and if you if you don't put the work in you don't put that practice in you you're going to get left behind um so ev everybody is up in the game because everybody wants wants a bit of the action 100 percent let's quickly touch on a couple of the other players that have made it through katie sheldon somebody obviously with target that i'm sure you you know fairly well um on that final day i think she went 13 legs without losing one <laughs> it was just four nil four nil four nil um phenomenal over the weekend she was brilliant and to, to see Katie progress from sort of the the youth side of the game to she's breezed into the ladies' side. She's got a wonderful attitude towards the game. She's gracious uh, when she wins. She's gracious in defeat, and um, she's got that um, that determination and grit to to stick in. And she's certainly a player that nobody really wants to play because because of, you know of her ability. She's She's such a good little player. She really is. Mm -hmm. And for you, um, looking ahead, I mean, in, in 12 months' time, what players do you think we could see that haven't made it this year, maybe not quite, that we may be able to see in, in 12 months' time come into Blackpool, hopefully with yourself once again? Oh, Rihanna Sullivan, definitely. Um, you know, I think she she was unlucky, really, not, not to qualify, because certainly this year, She's she's always been a class player, but always been under the radar. Nobody's ever really um, bigged her up as a player. But you, you look back over the years, she's made the Lakeside final several times. You know, you don't do that by just plodding along, you know. Um, so I, I, I felt for Rianne this weekend because she's she's playing so well um, and she's so difficult to, to beat because, again, she's got that that determination, that, that winning winning attitude um so certainly Rianne will definitely be there um Robin Byrne another one of the younger younger ladies you know she's she's been on the scene a long time uh, so she's got a lot of experience under her belt mm. and again a class player so um she only just missed out I think by a couple a uh, couple of places um Jane Densley didn't get through and that was on count back so that she's got to be hurting on that because um the last series i i played jane in every tournament <laughs> the weekend so i played her four times um and again i've known jane a long time we used to play county darts together so again she's always been a class player never really done the circuit always played county um so so again she's got she's got the game to miss out um i felt sorry for it sorry to admit to to that the way she did to go on count back is is painful. Yeah, it certainly is. But we'll look forward to seeing you in Blackpool in just a few weeks' time. Best of luck. I'm sure it'll be a fantastic tournament. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to it.